Hey, what it do with the business is? It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV podcast. I am Spike Lou. Man, holla at your boy, Animal Brown, Animal underscore Brown, if you're looking for me on social media. Yes, sir. I am Spike Lou on those same social sites. Holla at your boy, boy. Speaking of social sites, first of all, how was your week? Oh, it was good. I can't complain. It wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't nothing spectacular. Man, I almost got out of there on Spotify today. Spotify went down today. Just when I wanted to hear a song, it went down. It was down for like four hours, dude. I was out. I signed up for Apple Music and everything. As you should. You should have already been there. But Apple Music's format sucks. That's not true. That's the big thing, though. Once you get used, that's how motherfuckers get you. That's why I still have an iPhone. Once you get used to the formatting, it's over. Like, they got you. (laughs) <laughs> you ain't no switching to Androids. I'm on iPhone. Nah. I couldn't find songs that I was looking for. I was like, oh, I'm out. You get used to it, though. You get used you to do, it. You do, but, it, you know, just being our age, you, you don't want to get used to it. I want the shit to be normal. <laughs> so I was pissed off at Spotify today. I need that learning curve to be super short. Facts. I'm trying um, to sit here and figure this shit out. That's why I ain't on TikTok. And it, yeah, exactly. I done had 10 people ask me to get a TikTok, and I'm not, no. Nah. You got to do this shit, nigga. <laughs> I don't feel like learning nothing new right now, though. Thanks. Um, hey, man, action-packed episode today. Guys, Beanie Siegel turned down the bag from Ye. Young Thug says, man, social media makes him depressed. And it's Thanksgiving time, guys. It's right around the corner. So we're going to talk about what we're thankful for this year in the rap game. But first, we've got two sets of Snoop Dogg news. Uh-oh. All right, first, he's got his brand new... Uh, Def Jam gig, he made a big dog splash signing Benny the Butcher to the legendary Def Jam Records. And he also apparently has a TV series in the works regarding his murder case from the early 90s. It's in production, done by your boy 50 Cent. Mm. Which one of these two stories stood out to you the most for Snoop Dogg? Um, I'm not sure if we talked about Snoop being an executive at we Def did. Jam on here. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I, I was wasn't, a W, it was a W. Oh, perfect. So if I, say, if I wasn't in support of it, I am now. I don't think there's a job on earth that I wouldn't hire Snoop to do. That's a good point. Like, easily. He was on Joe Rogan, had a good three hour and a half interview. And he was just talking about how he's able to obtain all of this sponsorship. He was like, bro, I just be myself. Like, he's like most of the people that I deal with in this industry the reason that they don't make it or aren't successful haven't been around as long as me because they just don't enjoy being themselves like I do. Now, to answer your question about being himself, it's the movie. I love mm. this for culture. I love this. It reminded me of the OJ case when they did the whole thing on FX about his trial. Yep. This would be the same thing, but the hip hop version in my eyes. I hope that 50 hires the right people to do this. And I hope that they do this better than the the soap opera type drama that the other series do because this is more based in real life and i just really hope that he uses this opportunity to grow because we've talked about this before taking moments out of hip-hop and making them stories making that stuff not like tales not like the shit that Earl Gotti does but real moments out of hip-hop and making that a story and snoop murder was a case i think was the perfect way to start this you probably could get in to the time that 50 got shot and a lot of more things that happen in hip hop. I want to read the tagline that really sold me on this. It makes me think that 50 has some professionals. It says a moment in time when the dream you have been wishing for feels like a nightmare. You think you have, you think you know, but you have no idea. Fire. That's a good tagline right there for a movie. I'm definitely waiting on that show and I hope 50 does it right. Yeah, uh, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was thinking people versus OJ, bro. That's exactly what I was thinking. And if they do that, it'll be fire. Um, but since you already spoke to that, I'm going to take the other one. Snoop signing Benny to Def Jam. We've talked about this several times. Def Jam is underwater. Mm. And, and, it, and it used to be the GOAT label. That's where everybody wanted to go to. That's where Russell, LL, you know, Meth. I, the, the, the list is forever of who has been on Def Jam. They haven't had a star in a very long time. And nowadays, when everybody has independent labels, a big boy label like Def Jam doesn't really hit the same. People care more about boutique labels. They're repping Griselda. You mm. know, they're repping Dream Chasers, MMG. That would, that's what gets repped nowadays. So the Def Jams, the Universals, that took a back seat. I like this. I think if this was done, 
this makes me miss kind of our youth because if this would have been source double XL days, Def Jam would have signed about four or five people and they would have been on the cover of the latest magazine. It would have made a bigger splash and it would have made a bigger impact. Mm. Showing Benny on Instagram, signing paperwork to Def Jam. That's one in a thousand pictures that I saw yesterday on Instagram. And so it's still cool. And I still think it is something that could work. And it's a, it's a step in the right direction. It just doesn't have the same splash as it would have 15 years ago when we used to go to the store and, and go to Kroger and get magazines. And it'd be new when we walked in the store and saw it right there in our face. Like, oh, shit. As opposed to one in a million things I saw that day. So it's cool. It's a step in the right direction. But I don't think it's as big of a deal as I want it to be or if Def Jam needs it to be. It's cool, 100%. But my question to you is, to me, that just says that Benny isn't the guy. Like, Benny's not the guy that I'm putting to be a superstar and building Def Jam around. He's good. He's good for Griselda. He's great in the boutique label lane. He's a good piece. Good piece. Yeah. But when you are talking about, like you said, magazines, like he ain't in the front when that magazine come out. And if it like if Young Thug had signed a Def Jam yesterday and was just on Instagram signing papers, it would have been a big deal. And mm. I only say that to say not knocking Benny. I just don't think that he's a star to build a label around. It's not going to make a lot of waves when you have a Benny the Butcher signing in 2021. Now, his flow and what he talks about and, and how he presents himself in the rap game is just not what the youth and the people that are more. Um, people that are moving the units, people yeah, that are sure. out there in the festivals, like Benny ain't that type of dude. So again, like you said, it's a big deal for us. It's a big deal for Def Jam in the sense of being relevant, but I still don't think, like you said, this brings them up from water. This doesn't make a big enough splash because it's Benny. If it was somebody else, then maybe, but I don't think that they can even get that somebody else. Benny is the biggest fish that Def Jam can get right now, and that's saying a lot. But think Benny about it, though. Fish, he ain't. Think, think about it. Think about if Snoop would have took the picture with three or four Bennies and been like, nigga, we, the new Def Jam and maybe like one or example. two young cats. Give me an example. Like Dave East? Nah, that like ain't who? enough. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm it, trying it, to think it, of who, like, like if it was Corday, okay. if it was Benny. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think if it was like a young nigga, like it, like, and it was like four or five like of them ESTG standing right there. Or somebody, it was somebody like that. That shit would have been that would have made a, a it would have been like, whoa, hold on now. Like Dev Jam ain't book like they like you remember. I don't know if you remember when Puma was like, we finna get back in the game. I remember they did that. Nigga, they signed shit. everybody. Nigga, they, they they went after all the lottery picks. They like nigga, y'all gonna read about this in in all of the blogs and all of the whatever. We're back. We're making a splash. We're going after all the top picks. Like, I think if Def Jam was aggressive like that, then it would make a bigger deal. But just Benny signing the paper today and then maybe somebody signing in February and it's like, eh, it, ain't, it ain't the same. Wendy spoke a little bit about leverage. It was surprising to me to see this with the leverage that I know that Benny has to go to Def Jam. I mean, he got I the think bag, they, though, because they desperate. Uh, who, Def Jam? Yeah, they desperate. You think they cut the check? Hell yeah. Big boy check? Yes. Not turn, you can't turn this down money? Yes. Snoop, was Snoop that, understands was that business side. Now, he knows what it's going to take to get a nigga like Benny. Snoop ain't created that deal. Snoop just made the call, though. Snoop just made the call and was like, how much you need? And he probably gave him an outrageous number. And Snoop went back and said, this is what he said he won't. And they was like, well, we'll give him this. And Snoop was like, look, young blood, it's going to make me look good and make <laughs> you look good. Take this. Look, I, promise you, I'm gonna, I promise you I'm going to rock out with you. You gonna... And that's what happened. Like, it's a big... I, I, have, like this is a brilliant move by Def Jam to have Snoop signing people like that. That's brilliant. Like I love that because I feel like without Def Jam, I mean, excuse me, without Snoop, Benny not signing to Def Jam. Nah, I ain't, I ain't signing with y'all niggas. But Snoop nah. here, most famous rapper in the world, working with y'all. Okay, I want to at least hear what you got to say. And you got me in the room. You got big pockets. Let's do it. I agree. I fuck with that. All right. Speaking of the aforementioned core day, he mm-hmm. went on a Twitter rant the other day, man, and he said, you know what? Most of these rappers out here are only pro-black when it's convenient. Went on to call rappers Oreos. You don't know what that means. It's black on the outside and white on the inside. Animal Brown, my question to you. Do rappers only support pro-blackness when it's convenient? Man, I, listen, I understand why he would say that. And mm. I'm going to tell you the first person I thought about when he said this. And I'm not saying that this is the case mm-hmm. or this is even who he was alluding to. 
mm-hmm. but I immediately thought of Lil Baby. What? With, with his record, the bigger picture coming off the George Floyd shit. Uh-huh. That's immediately what I thought of. But here's the thing. I and I'm not even saying that I feel like he was he did that like purposefully. I feel like people adapt to the times. Okay. And they take advantage of opportunities. And I don't mean that in a negative sense, but it's what people are talking about. So if you're a if you're a top tier rapper and the world is talking about George Floyd and activism and stuff, and then you come out with a song and ain't got nothing to do with none of that, some people are looking to you to be a voice for them. And so you have to adapt and you have to speak about what the, what the streets are talking about. And if that's what's going on in the streets, then that's what if I'm a little baby who had never, to my knowledge, made a political air quote song before. He made that one and it was successful and a good record and in the in whole it didn't seem forced or nothing. So then you then it works. I want I would love to ask Corday what's the difference between that and what he's alluding to and who he's alluding to. Because you see it all the time. Jeezy had a woke album, air quote. T.I. had a, the us or else when the activism stuff was going on. That was his one project. And then he abandoned it and went to something else. Like, is that what he's referring to? Because that happens. But sometimes that's just people speaking on current events. And I can't knock you having your ear to the street and speaking on current events. But there's a thin line between that and what Corday is talking about. And it could go either way. Mm. I'm not going to let you shit on little baby, uh, first and foremost. I, I, I feel like that was directed at a Kendrick Lamar. And here's Hell the reason. no. The Absolutely. Fuck? And the reason being, no. first of all, he's the top of the game. I have no, like, little Baby ain't in Corday's lane. Oh, so he's aiming up. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's aiming up, and he's aiming at people in the similar lane to him. Like, people give oh, okay. Kendrick Lamar credit for being a conscious rapper a lot. But some people criticize him and say, hey, when all of this shit is going on, I haven't heard from you in five years, bro. It wasn't a George Floyd song. It ain't to pimp a butterfly. Didn't re-release like none of that, my nigga. You just been silent. And I think that with the new album coming out, Young Blood on the Block trying to take that lane and be more serious, more vocal about it. I think that he's aiming at it, Kendrick Lamar. Though, like, because his brand is built around pro blackness with the To Pimp a Butterfly album. Those other people, I think, those are just songs. I don't even think that he was paying attention to them, but. To, to define what pro-blackness is, it's a lifestyle that encourages the economic growth and development of the black people as a whole with the purpose of increasing the wealth of population of black people around the world. I don't think that no rapper dabs in and out of it. Like, I feel like the most rappers in order to be popular and successful amongst black people in the positions that they're in, they can't shun away from black. Like, I don't see I don't see a lot of people doing that publicly. You had an example, maybe with Kanye with the Trump shit, but even he came and explained his thought process. Not to say that I agree with it because I don't, but he at least explained the process and what his thought process was of how that would advance black people. I don't see any rappers out here straight Uncle Tom and the Coon in it. So I disagree with him in that in, in the statement that he said. I don't think that it's true, but I do think that he meant that at Kendrick Lamar because he's been so silent. And the convenient part of it that he meant was, hey, you can put to pimp a butterfly out when everything is cool and everybody's listening to Drake. But now that people want to hear social commentary, dudes, you got on a white fur suit and extensions in your hair with stacks on and nobody knows what's going on with you. Speaking of Kendrick Lamar's latest appearance. Yeah. I feel like that's what striked all of this from Corday. Kendrick Lamar looked like he'd been dating Erica Badu. Hey, he definitely been in the Andre's three stacks closet. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my guy Yoski, man. He he sent me that dude. I busted Ooh, I out laughing. I was like, "Yeah, you ain't lying, nigga." I don't know what Kendrick Lamar. But then again, it's been so long since we done really just seen him, man. It ain't no telling. Nigga, um, I but I mean, I listen. I, I I I fuck with Corday. I would love for him to say names so we know it's real. <laughs> Let's be specific. Mm. But uh, mm. that'll never happen. He doesn't come off as that kind of guy giving that energy. He just expressing his how he feel about shit and what he's seeing that he might not be that he might not like. And I ain't mad at it. But yeah, I ain't mad at him for coming out. I think he taking he trying to take it early. They trying to establish himself in this game. He got a new album coming out. He taking shots at Kendrick. I feel like I can rap with you, my nigga. Yeah, don't I ain't do that mad though. Uh, <laughs> he ain't bit off. Jesus, smoking on top fives, man. Yeesh. Hey, um, listen, don't man, come playing because that nigga dressed funny. All yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, don't yeah, don't do that. Right. Don't sleep. Um, next up, man, your man Young Thug took to social media to say, God damn it, I'm depressed. This social media shit is for the birds. It's killing me. 
Meek Mill co-signed that, said he agreed. My question, are you surprised that social media depresses celebrities? Absolutely, because they made it this way. Like, I remember when Twitter was normal. I don't know if Instagram ever been normal. Yeah, but probably not. Regular people weren't the ones on there, like, putting the money phones up, showing the stars in the race for the double R's and the Rolls Royce behind the head. See, like, that didn't start with normal people. People was on Instagram taking pictures. People on Twitter having fun. Until niggas like Meek Mill and Young Thug ruined it with, hey, look at what I got 24-7. So, yeah, it's depressing to you now because you're seeing all of these people following the trends that you guys set on social media. That's the first thing. The second thing is I'm surprised that you niggas even have time to sit here and scroll on it long enough to be depressed. Bro, I'm not famous. I'm not even half as busy as I think that Young Thug and Meek Mill is. But I got like 15 minutes for Instagram a day, maybe. <laughs> And I'm out of there. Like, I'm not sitting here scrolling and wondering, oh, man, this is crazy. Let me click on this and let me read this claps. And what is Shade Room talking about? I don't care, bro. I'm trying to build an empire as I assume that these niggas are. So how would you be on here long enough to get depressed? That shit is weird to me that these niggas come out and say that. I feel like they just playing into a trend. I do not believe it at all. I, I definitely believe it. Because you got to think, for that 15 minutes that they're on, mm -hmm. the shit that they're seeing in their DMs, the comments that they're seeing, I can only imagine it's bananas. Mm -hmm. And everybody lo loves a train wreck, bro. So it, it could be a thousand people showing love and meet comments. You know, the one comment that's going to stand out is the one that's calling him some sloth. I hate it's you. the one that's saying his album is trash. Mm -hmm. That's going to stand out. And you can only take but so much of that before it's like, okay, now I got to say something. <laughs> I'm, I'm young thug, though. I can put this phone down, literally go fuck any bitch that you want to fuck. <laughs> Ride in any car that you want to ride in. Go buy anything that you want to buy at the mall, my nigga. I can do that. I can put this phone down and do that. That is nuts to me. The niggas like them, like somebody on a lower level who might not be where they've seen. Like these niggas have seen ultimate success, dude. If things depress you, it should be not getting shit accomplished. Not sitting on Instagram worried about what other motherfuckers got going on. This is baffling to me. Like I was, I was floored by this headline. I couldn't believe. I ain't gonna lie, but he, he, Offset he, also just just on another Offset also came out when it was down for six hours. Instagram, he came out and said he was addicted. I didn't know what to do for six hours when I didn't have Instagram. You see what I'm saying? I don't, I don't believe that, dude. Well, well, they're still human beings, and human people are definitely tied to IG and social media. But I ain't gonna lie, anytime I'm too busy to hop on that shit for a day, that shit feels great. Don't like I like it, that, that shit feels don't even miss it. But that's what I'm saying. You don't miss it. You don't even realize. You're like, damn, I ain't been on all day. That shit crazy. Yeah. Like, that shit feels good. And I would think I, any way possible, if I'm meek, if I'm offset, if I'm young thug, I would try to stay busy to where I'm not fuck with it. Because it is a mind thing, bro. Like, niggas is humans, dude. Like, I don't know whether you, you are a fan of their music or not. They still regular niggas. They put on pants one leg at a time, dude. So that shit is attracting to them. Their, listen, their search, what's the, what's their explore shit on Instagram looks like everybody else's explore shit, dude. And sometimes mm -hmm. that shit is hard to put down. Like, it just is what it is. It's I can't to expect them to be right? any different than any regular person walking the earth. Facts. It's built to be addictive, and I and I'm not being dismissive of people being addicted to it, and I 100% agree with that. Y'all niggas are trend sellers, though. Meek Mill, Young Thug. If it's depression, change it. Be positive on there. Reach out to motherfuckers. Do giveaways. Like there's a hundred ways for niggas in their position to turn Instagram around and make it positive. Just try one of them. That's true. All right. Before we get into what we're thankful for in this Thanksgiving episode of the On Deck TV podcast, we want to leave the quick hits with Benny Siegel. Benny Siegel. Followed up with Kanye West in that $50 million promise because Benny Siegel created the name Yeezy, and we all know where that's gotten Kanye West. Mm -hmm. When offered the $50 million, Benny Siegel put a comment out and said, you know what? I'd rather learn how to fish from Kanye West than take the fish, a.k.a. the $50 million, and that is what's going to set me up for success. Animal Brown. If Kanye West offers you $50 million or some game, which one are you taking? <laughs> Yo, this is hilarious. And this plays right into the whole, would you have dinner with Jay-Z or $50,000 uh, discussion? Million percent thought that too. This, it's the exact same discussion, except 50,000 is far from 50 million. And anybody saying that they would rather have the game or be taught how to fish, nigga, you are a goddamn lie. Run them 50 M's uh, in a check 
wire it to me however it needs to go. Let me get that up off you. That's a drop in the bucket for these billions and billions of dollars you've made off of the nickname that I gave you 15 years ago. We're going to make this real simple. Here's my wire number, my routing information, <laughs> run them 50. Uh, you were just capping with the 50. It's only 30. That's fine. You can run them 30, dude. That's I don't need, need, I'll see you when I see you. I can pay for the game with 50 million. I don't have to get it directly from Yay. Yeah, <laughs> You'll like, never catch Yay. You be like, bro, I just want to learn how to fish. And the nigga number has changed, nigga, the next day, nigga. Do, do, do. The number you have dialed, no, you're not going to do me any kind of way. <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, yeah, absolutely not. Bro, they, if you can't figure out how to fish for 50 million, then you don't deserve it. I probably like I ain't even been hard on niggas or that, but if you got 50 million, you're like, no, you know what? I'd rather have a game. You don't deserve 50 million. Bro. <laughs> Cause, Cause you won't know what, like, what to do with the game. Too. Cause you don't know what to do what you're going to do with the game. I feel like he's hearing Kanye West say 7 billion and seeing him move around. He think, Oh, I can do that. Newsflash where you've been in single. You can't no. Kanye West is a special dude, regardless of how people feel about him right now, regardless if you think he's a genius or not, he is a special dude. He got into that a little bit on the drink champs episode Benny Siegel ain't that. Like, my nigga, I can sit here and talk to you for days on end and years. You'll never have what Kanye West has. Yeah. Take the $50 million, do state property. I seen young Chris right there with him when he was uh, making this announcement. Like, do you. But yeah. expecting to do Kanye West and learning game from him and thinking that you're going to make $7 billion as Kanye West claims he has, that's nuts. That's 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 That goes to the line with Benny Siegel, what Jay-Z said about Biggs. Like, I yeah. ain't trying to change you, my nigga. I'm just trying to teach you some game. How yeah. long ago was that? That was a while ago. Bro, you still ain't learned game yet? Jay was trying to teach you game 25 years ago, my <laughs> nigga. Take the 50 million. Come on, bro. You already, you could have learned from the best teacher, my nigga. You jacked that. <laughs> Jesus. Listen, I will say this, though. Shout out to my guy, S. Dot Wash. We were talking about this. And he's made, he made a good point. He said, are we sure... We want Benny Siegel handed over a check for 50 million at one time. Are we mm. sure we want that to happen? Bean, Beans might not, he might not see 2022. Too. We, if you had a wrong person 50 M's, bro, it could, it could be a disaster. That is a let's, fact. let's be honest. Beans talked about how he used to spend back in the day. He, he was the nigga that bought two and three rolls at once. And I, and I get it. That was a while ago. He's probably grown from then, I hope. But I don't even want him to relapse. Like, if you do break them off, man, it need to be some stock options to where it's a little bit difficult to get to. Or, you know what I'm saying, just some annulments or something. <laughs> Please don't feel, get a nigga 50 million at one time, bro. <laughs> would you feel guilty if you gave a nigga 50 million dollars and he killed himself? That's what I'm, you, you, of course. You would? Yes. Yeah, my nigga, that's on you. Because you didn't get him the game. you out 50 million, my nigga, and you jackballed it, drunk yourself to death. And did fucking drugs, my nigga. You deserve to be wherever you at. <laughs> I'm sorry, my nigga. I ain't. Fuck that. If I got guy, you better hire some help, my nigga. Come on home, bro. Like I get what you're saying, 100. It is dangerous to hand him a check, but I wouldn't feel sorry if I was Kanye. I, my nigga, I hire your financial advisor, a life coach. You better listen to what he say, my nigga. Turning them 50 down is bananas, and probably cap if we pay 100. Kanye West ain't giving nobody 50 million dollars. Let's be honest. Yeah, nah, hell no, nah. no. Nah. Well, what, what, what would you break him off if he was Kanye? What would you cash? Break? Yeah, we we just talking cash. Yeah, we writing a check. We writing a check. Man, like a meal. Cutting it, man. You we know how it is, dude. You look you at Forbes money. and niggas' net worth be one thing. Their yeah. liquid cash is coming. He don't have a million dollars to hand off. <laughs> to That's what I'm saying. I, I give him, I give him stock in Yeezy, like the there whole like or percentage, a percentage of Yeezy, something like yeah, that. Get like two, three percent of that. Yeah, exactly. I would do that. Yeah. yeah, you can have that. For yeah, sure. You got good stock options in Yeezy. Yeah, I do that 100. Shout out to Succession. I learned them four <laughs> percent can be a lot of goddamn money. That facts. Who had four percent in the company? It was three hundred and twenty-five million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. <laughs> Um, hey man, we are talking Thanksgiving. It's right around the corner. Crep up again, as always. God damn. Um, I'm ready for they it doing, too. They doing something with the time, man. There's something going yeah, it's, on. Like shit is flying by like unridiculously crazy. Shit, shit, shit coming up too quick of a pace. Next week we're going we're gonna do our annual Thanksgiving episode. If you've been listening for a couple of years, you know how we get down with the guests who's coming to dinner. But this week. We're going to talk about what we're thankful for in 2021, man, when it comes to this rap game. We're going to talk about trends, 
verses, features, all that good shit. But let's kick it off, man, with an artist or artist that you were thankful for in 2021 that did their thing. I This took me some thinking to do. And um, I didn't want to go too sideways with this. So it's kind of a mainstream answer. Yeah. But the reason that I picked this person is because most of the big dogs have dropped this year. And with the big dogs dropping, I got to see how they approached it being away for a while. The person that I seen with the most passion that gave a fuck about everything the most and has been continuously doing so for the last couple of years is J. Cole. Mm. Uh, the off season is amazing. In fact, I think his energy and what he does holds everybody else to a standard that I appreciate. And that's why I'm thankful for him. Drake know he can't come out here bullshitting. Kendrick Lamar know he can't come out here bullshitting because J. Cole is outside. I'm outside every year. I got artists outside. My nigga, I do this. I rap and I'm fucking good at it. And I ain't going to shy away from saying it. And anybody that wants smoke can get it. Yeah. I love that about J. Cole. He has the energy that he has that energy that we grew up on in hip hop. That's why I appreciate it so much. With Kendrick Lamar, he off in his own bubble. In a silo, I ain't really. It's like I'm not in the same league as y'all niggas. I'm playing a different sport. With Drake. It's the same thing. I mean, rightfully so. His nigga's a yeah. pop artist. Like, he, 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 you know, we've never seen anything like Drake, so I ain't really got to do what you niggas do. With J. Cole, I think years from now, when a generation passes, we're going to look back and wonder why we were comparing niggas to him. He's going to mm. be hands down the best rapper of this generation, and I appreciate the energy that he brings to the game. I'm thankful for J. Cole. Yeah, I'm, I'm rocking with that, too. The album, it, it was stupid tough. Uh, of course, it'll be up there on that top 10 list when we finish this year out. Cole did his thing, man. He, even watching him at his failed NBA Africa attempt, mm -hmm. it's, it's still, it, it was a nice rollout, man, with the album. I, I give him that. Uh, but I, I, I fuck with Cole, me. too. That go to what I'm saying. Like you said, I'm glad you brought that up with the NBA rollout shit. There's a difference between what J. Cole's doing and, and I think that rollout with the NBA stuff kind of personified it. It's like, nigga, I'm trying. I ain't reached cruise control yet. I'm still trying, whether it be basketball tryouts, whether I drop an off-season album and just record this and in, in, in just randomly, but I'm trying. Like, I'm not necessarily sure that's the case for the other niggas that are his counterparts in the top three. Like, I don't it know if they're necessarily trying. They more so in cruise control. Now, he sounded hungry. He was hungry on that album. He's been hungry all year. I'm going to keep it a stack because he's been ripping Thanks. features and everything. Mm -hmm. Um... And somebody else that's been hungry, in my opinion, who I mentioned that I was thankful for, I got Jada, bro. Mm. Jada gave us some good content this year, dude. <laughs> like, he went two for two on the versus stage. He done brought the locks back from the dead, respectfully. I've always been a fan. But let's be honest, the verses put them back on the map. He has been killing shit all year long. He has brought real shit. He, he had people talking about real performances and real shows and showing what it means to actually put on a real legitimate show. And he had to make an example out of Dip Diplomats, which is one of my favorite groups back in the day. So I hate that it had to be them, but you were the ones that got made an example out of because y'all came into the verses lacking. And the locks and Jada man. specifically as the head man of the locks took them to school and brought like real fundamentals of hip hop shit back that everybody appreciated nigga from east to west from north to south nigga like everybody was like hey they killed that shit and locks and uh jada was the main reason for it um so yeah I, he's been killing shit man i love i love to see because we talked about this just a little bit like it, rap is a young man's game however you still have people in like a jada range that are still very much quote unquote relevant to a large number of people and that can still move the needle with a group of people. And it's cool to not see them looking washed and flabby and sick, dude. Mm. So like, because when we were younger, the artists that came before the people that we looked up to, but they looked down, they let they had no paper. You know what I'm saying? Like they were like, eh. Like Jada and them, like they still eating good. Like, it, like just doing you pull ups in Central Park. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You you don't want to see those rappers going out sad, and they're not. And I feel like Jada is a is a good representation of that. So he's definitely an artist that I was thankful for this year, man. I'm fucking with what he got going on. Absolutely, I like that.
is good, but it's not enough. Like the meme say with Cam. One of the Martin. best memes of the year, gifts of the year. Absolutely. I, I fuck with that. And Jada's done his thing, man. And like you said, one of mine, we'll get into it later. I just appreciate the culture for the older rappers right now in the game. Verse of the, that I'm thankful for, not verse of the year. We'll do that at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. But. Uh, this one right here, I remember when I put this on and the, the little pack dropped. Uh, it was Drake, that scary house too. And uh, little baby verse on that goddamn wants and needs. He snapped. I really couldn't believe that he had, that he went and did that on a Drake feature. I he thought snapped. that we would get some typical little baby and it would be, all right, that was cool. And then Drake would come through and murder it. But he hey, he came in there knowing, hey, nigga, this is a Drake verse. Drake finna come in here and do it. I want to show people that this is the next dude. I'm the next generation. I'm what people are listening to in the locker room now. I'm what's cool. I'm here to kind of take the torch from Drake. Not necessarily saying that he's through, but that space that he operated in, that's mine now. Because he's moved on. <laughs> he's moved up. And I think this verse did that. This verse solidified that it showed people that Baby was really here to rap and he can be a superstar. Had success before this, I understand that. But I think getting on this track with Drake and doing what he did, showing you that he take this shit serious and I can rap a person under the table too. I loved it. Still listening to this verse to this day, that little Baby verse on wants and needs is what I'm thankful for. Yeah, no, I ain't gonna lie. That's, that was one of those ones that made people go, wait, this nigga, like... Like this nigga has improved. Like damn. Like yeah. Like he's already had been doing his thing. But you, it's one of those verses that like, he, he like he left his footprint, bro. Like it's memorable. And mm -hmm. and Drake, and this is some people gonna think this is cap. Drake is underrated at letting people eat though. Like he let people live, bro. Because you know how many times we've heard artists be like, man, that nigga came in and killed my shit. I had to come in and go behind him and do another verse. I came and did it again. I came in, like how many times, or, or they added something at the end. Like how many times have we heard people say that? And he could very well do that. Trust me. If he Drake wanted to body a nigga on this shit, he could have cut that verse in half and then came back behind the nigga singing, harmonizing it. Like, and then rapped again and, and stomped them if he wanted to, but he lets people eat. So I, and, but still to baby's credit, he still got to come on there and do his thing. And he did, he killed that verse. That's a good point. And that's what I like about Drake. It's hard to be, it's hard for why would people be hating or hate Drake? I don't understand it because he's such a fan of hip hop. Yep. Drake love rap. Yep. And if a nigga get on his shit, like you can see him at the battle rap. So you can tell that nigga loves rap. So when a nigga get on his shit and do what baby did, like you said, he, I ain't yeah. gonna do it. No disservices by touching it, my nigga. You went off. I ain't gotta come in behind him or nothing. You got me. It's the competitive spirit of that for me, because then baby knowing the he knowing the next one, I'm coming for you. Yep. Like it reminded me, I watched the KG doc this uh, weekend, man. And the most interesting thing about it, and it's like what you said with Drake, like that nigga loves basketball, dude. Yeah. Like it's it's amazing how much this nigga is like just loves basketball and all. You know, and I feel the same way about Drake and rap and just lyrics and bars. Yeah, nah, that's a fact. Um, that was a fire verse though. All in all. Yep. Um, verse a, a verse that I'm and a feature that I'm thankful for. Uh, I didn't think we were going to get a real version of this song. It leaked actually by Drake leaked a record that was allegedly dissing him featuring Andre 3000 and Kanye West. And listen, when I tell you, even with the low fi low quality version, that Andre 3000 verse was special, even with that. Fast forward this past weekend and the Donda Deluxe comes out and it's got the CD quality. It's mixed and mastered. Got a brand new Kanye verse. But that Andre 3000 verse stole the show. That, 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 I'm spoiler alert. That's verse of the year, bro. Mm. That if you, there's no listen. way on God's green earth that you can listen to that song and not feel some type of way. If you A, have, are close to your parents, B, have kids, or C, have any soul whatsoever in your body. One of those three, dude. If you have any one of those three, then you felt that verse right there that Andre was talking. Nigga, that shit is complete flames. I listened to it over and over and over again in the car. It sounded even better. And I damn near had an out-of-body experience after like the fourth listen. That's how special that shit was, dude. That song is fucking incredible. But I'm sticking to the verse. Andre 3000 verse was the verse of the year. Spoiler alert. I'm stepping all over my end of the year episode. But that shit is crack. 
I got to get on that. Damn. I don't think I've listened to the C. What? I ain't even know the deluxe drop. I ain't gonna lie to you. I've heard the verse when they leaked it, but I ain't even know the deluxe drop. I'm gonna listen to that when we get done with this. That shit, that verse, it, and Andre 3000, we know he's the, he's the serial verse killer. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He's the feature destroyer. But this- you call him to get killed. You call yeah. him to get murdered. If he don't murder you on the track, he didn't do Andre 3000. This was like, dude, man, this is why people, that verse is why people put dude in their top fives, their top tens, even though he ain't really got a true rap solo. It's bars like that, because that's just special. I'm going to check that out when we get done. Please, dude, you sleeping. Facts. A trend or some, what is it? A trend or? Yeah, I mean, just a, a trend or um, any any <laughs> anything in hip hop, non, not necessarily a person, you know, that you were into. I, I, I can definitely go. I thought um, I was glad. I was thankful that live shows came back. Hmm. Of course, we know what happened last year in the pandemic. All that shit shut down. We had no idea coming in the top of the year when or if people were ever going to be back outside. We, we thought it was we thought Forever. quarantine was going to last for the rest of our life. It felt like it. Forever? Forever? Man, that, was, that was a good one. Uh, but eventually doors opened back up. People came back outside. And we got dope events like live verses. You got um, the Donda listening parties. Um, those were super dope. I'm extra glad I went. And I'm so glad they didn't play that life of the party at that live event. Because they would and 15,000 people would have saw a grown man have a nervous breakdown if I'd have heard that in public. Um, and then live shows, too. I went to the Benny show. Uh, you know, saying the live shows are back, man. People are touring again. Um, on, for, on the flip side of that, you got the tragedy at Astro World. Unfortunately, uh, that kind of overshadowed all of this other good stuff. But for the most part, Rolling Loud went without a hitch in New York and in Miami. And you had mad festivals going on with no issues. So it was just cool to good, good to see people back outside and uh, enjoy music in person. Yeah, the live, I, I agree. I ain't went to any live shows, but I definitely look forward to attending some where I can't and won't get my shoes dirty though. So if it's a venue where my shoes won't get fucked up, I'm in there. <laughs> uh, somebody got arrested at Rolling Loud New York, didn't you? Who was that? You remember? Uh, was it New York or was it Miami that somebody got arrested? New York, though? somebody got arrested on that. I was oh, listening. No, no. Joe, Joe Button and they were talking about it. Uh, trend Ooh. that I'm thankful for, you hit on it a little bit earlier. This is like, this was not the case when you and I were growing up in hip hop. If you were old, an older person, you were labeled as flabby and sick, you out of here, no one wanted to hear from you. Thankfully, that trend has changed in 21, man. Thanks to podcasting. Thanks to just niggas still being on a bop like Jay-Z at 40 plus. Niggas just putting out verses. Like the older crowd of hip hop, man, I appreciate it so much that we're not shuffling our legends out anymore. We're treating them like legends, like other genres of music, rock, country, like they do. We're not saying, oh, they don't have anything to say because they're old and they're not the most popular or famous rapper anymore. We're listening to them. We're taking advice from their at places. They're doing features still like Project Pat on Drake album. Like I love the fact that we are embracing the old heads in hip hop now. It's going to mean longevity for the culture. We're going to learn a lot more listening to the people that have been through it. And I just love to see it. Like, I don't even know where it started, but I kind of created 444. And even before that, we're like, we just started accepting what older people like Jay-Z and that crowd, Jada Kiss, you brought a good example of Joe Button with his podcast, Fat Joe with his podcast, Scarface with his podcast. Like, nope. I just love that the older crowd is getting to talk and I'm getting to listen to that. Thankful for that. Yeah, I agree. And that's funny because that I had one more that alludes to that. A, mm. a trend that I like this year, I, I was thankful for was the rapper interviews. Mm. Um, I, Kanye's interview was entertaining. Birdman's interview on, on Big Facts was entertaining. Um, a couple of other people that you just named that like Fat, whether it's Fat Joe's recaps, like that shit was hella entertaining. Like people are getting their stories told. Project Pat told his whole story on Vlad. I had never heard his whole story, even though shout out to Project Pat, friend of the show, but he took it from the beginning. Let's chat. Like niche artists like that get to tell their story and it's documented somewhere. And that's cool to see. And, and, and depending on who you're a fan of, I guarantee you, man, in the last two to three years, they've had an interview where they've got to tell their story where 10 years ago, that shit didn't exist. The medium didn't exist for it. So- 
I, I think that's been big. Give it, and I think it kind of started. Well, maybe not started, but I know Combat Jack played a role. Mm. Um, rest in peace, Combat Jack. And then with Drink Champs, because they're big on giving people their flowers, and so they had a, a super uh, specific avatar of a person come through, and you knew that they were going to go through their whole joint. So, and it was going to be long form, and so that's cool, man. Like it's it's dope to see people ain't out here looking washed. Silk the Shocker was on Drink Champ. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're getting good. You're getting stuff from people's legends, man, because everybody is a legend to somebody. We talked about this Thanks. before, bro. Nigga, nigga argued us down. Project Pat was better than Jay-Z. The he, he, with, with the straightest face of all time, bro. So, like, he's ecstatic that he gets to watch his Project Pat interview in 2021 on a big, quote-unquote, big platform. Like, hearing him do. on Drake shit? Bro, like, come on, bro. I wonder like, where what? that dude at, man. Yeah, that was true. funny as hell, man. I wonder what he had today. Man, y'all crazy, man. Project Pat better than Jay-Z, man. <laughs> God, that's crazy. I never, I would never forget that in my life. Ever. Hell no. Nah. But it was dope. It was, but that's dope to see, man. Hey, I love, I love seeing man. that shit, bro. People looking healthy. Ain't nobody yes. looking crazy. Yeah, you know niggas doing, like I said, niggas doing pull-ups in Central Park, <laughs> drinking the juices. Shout out to Styles P. Like, I love it. Like, we just didn't see that when we were younger. Like, and it was over for niggas. And once you went in the mainstream and you were not no more, it was a rap. Wasn't no juice bars. With no verses, nah. with no podcast, nigga. It was over, nigga. So I love to see the success being shared. I love it. Man, let us know what you guys think. What are you thankful for this year in hip hop? Whether that's an artist, whether that's a specific feature or just a trend that you saw, man. Let us know in the comments. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, man, leave a comment. Let us know. Um, we got some, some ugh, we got some wins and some losses. We're going to hand out an L to Miss Rico Nasty. She was doing a show. She's having a rough time on tour with Playboy Cardi right now. Um, Yeah, in this recent (laughs) stop, she actually jumped in the crowd um, to approach someone that threw a bottle at her while she was on stage. Um, So L to Rico Nasty. And that was coming off the heels of her getting booed off stage at (laughs) at another location, man. It's getting getting tricky. This was after the Travis Scott shit. Yeah. Like, have you no sense? Yeah, like, come on, gosh. woman. Like, she kind of slow. No, I, well, actually, I ain't gonna lie. It, the, the people that are booing her but cheering for Playboy Cardi, I would argue, are more slow than she is right now. Yeah, Playboy Cardi, more, worst rapper of all time, bro. Fuck even it. more reason not to go into the crowd. That's a good point. Come on, man. You a lady, dude. He's crazy. <laughs> you got Playboy Cardi fans booing you, and you want to go approach them? Like, we know Rico Nasty. This got to do with what is it? Artist training and management, man. People need to learn how to work crowds and stuff. Like it's that's just, true. It's, get, it's dangerous, as we seen with the Travis Scott situation. That's man. true. Shit is shit is but hey, but stop throwing shit though. That's stupid. Stop throwing shit on that's stage. Wacky. That's fuck that's wrong. Super with you. Wacky. I, I love the nigga that threw something in security saw you and they get oh, yeah. worked. You get the folded. Big that, that work, like nigga steamrolled up out of that. I love that because you shouldn't have been in here playing, nigga. I love that. Every time I'm, I'm watching all of those videos, the nigga in the crowd that got worked for playing, yeah, like I'm watching all of those. <laughs> uh, let's flip the script, man. We got a W to the long-awaited Bone and 3-6 Mafia versus is finally announced, man. Good to see that actually happen. If you remember, early last year, Bone and 3-6 tried to hold their own versus, and Swiss and Tim put the call in and said, hold on, man, chill out. Y'all got to chill out. Relax. We finally got it, man. Or it's coming next month. Yeah, they were like, relax, get in line. Yeah, um, We got this. <laughs> I'm fucking with this. I'm, I'm definitely fucking with this. 100%. That's three six in a wash, though. Really? Bone got some smash. It's like they they do. With, but they going to play with Crossroads. Come on. They'll, they'll win that one. They'll win Crossroads. crossroads. They're going to win Crossroads. They're going to win Notorious Thugs. They're going to win Crossroads. And everything else is going to be a battle. Not notorious thugs as well. Three six ain't got no song with Biggie and Jay. They gonna win both the Biggie and uh pop, pop features. That's the rap and easy. Ah, uh, yeah, they do got a pop. Ah, oh, this gonna be a battle. You sleep? Yeah, I might be sleep. You might. sleep? This gonna be? Yeah, this might be a hype. This might be a hype right here. Yeah, no, nah, I'm fucking with this though, man. This is gonna be good to see again. People on there not looking wild. I hope they're not on there with. Uh, rock aware jeans on and shit like that. Hopefully, they got the check beforehand and they get the there you go. And <laughs> big boy, shit, man. his sacks up before they yeah, pull hopefully up. Hopefully, verses break them off beforehand. <laughs> and it's in LA, so they can go just hit, hit swap me real quick and get fresh. And it don't take much for them. Niggas. They I, I would have went to that if that was here. I would have went to that. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a bad one to go. That'd to. be Why cool. They have it in LA. Yeah, it's dumb to have it in LA. Fuck, yeah. It's whack. That's stupid. Uh, it ain't shit open in LA either. Just, yeah. They should have had that in Atlanta. 
Agreed. Right. Um, one more W, man, before we get out of here. Big Sean just broke ground on his movie theater that he's building in downtown Detroit. It should be ready to go late 2022, man. That's crazy. I've never been to Detroit. You have. You said it's, <laughs> it's rough. Terrible downtown. It's so rough. I, I can't wait to see how this works out. I, I, I'm very anxious to see. Detroit's a black city, so I'm supporting everything that he do and hope that it works out. But I'm definitely going to be paying attention to this. Uh, I'm interested. I, I, I even want to know how he got the land. And like, I, this is so many questions I have for this. I listened to a podcast about Detroit politics called uh, Slow Burn or some shit like that. Okay. And he, just, he went to the whole about the mayor that got arrested up there. So I was just wondering how he even got the politics to get the land and get this shit approved. But I'm I'm, I'm rooting for him. I want to see this happen. Big having been some big moves. Having been to Detroit relatively recently, I guarantee you it was not expensive to buy that land. <laughs> Because <laughs> downtown Detroit, saying, all that shit, like you said, run down, ain't it? So if, it look if, like BMF. It look, it look like the TV show BMF. It look like that right now. <laughs> That's how it looks. But like if, if it looks like that, it got to be a reason. Like they ain't selling the land or something. I know people want to buy that shit. I think it's I'm the like, casino, what? bro. Mm. The casino downtown. Was it bad business? I, have like, is, I think I think that takes money away. I, there's, I think there's something with that, bro, because that's yeah. why you don't see casinos in major metropolitan cities, with the exception of a tourist city Vegas. like Vegas. Vegas. They're usually on outskirts, hmm. except the one in Detroit. And I, I think there's something to it being run down. They got one right downtown? Literally. It's literally oh. right. MGM is right downtown. Hmm. That's crazy. Right, right down the street from blocks and blocks of bandos, nigga. Shit look crazy. Um, on Decker of the Week, man, we're going to YouTube. Shout out to Ben Blazing Creations. Left a comment on the Windy Day episode, man. They said, appreciate you guys for putting Wendy on the podcast. She stays dropping gems about the industry and how it takes much more than talent to make an impact in the music business. Appreciate you, Ben, man. Hey, we got two more episodes of Wendy in the cut, man. You got to pull those up. Thanks, man. Go check those out um got good feedback from that windy episode too man and that's listen we Wendy's got to have her own reoccurring dog to answer some questions for us because shit be happening in the industry we don't be knowing what the fuck going on she can clear it up for us facts and she can break it down wendy's always fun man i love to hear just the perspective the front row seat per se i think that's there you go. our specialty putting those people to have the front row seats to what's going on because we were we we have the front row seats as fans so the rest of the people in our kind of pure purview that's going to what we offer to you guys. So I loved it. I love, I love having that conversation with you. 100%, man. What you got to put me on, though? Two things. Uh, one, shout out to Cali from Belzer Gang, Nashville artist, man. He dropped his album, Man on the Low. has been out for about two weeks. Been doing a lot of promo for it. I took a listen to it this week. I like yes, it, man. Cali, yes, check sir. him out, man. It's called Man on the Low. I fuck with that album. Absolutely. Um, I checked it out, too. You fuck, yeah, I, I like it. Got some nice features on there. Good representation of the city, man. Y'all go check Khaled out, man. On the Lord. Shout out to Bezel Gang and back. Uh, that's one. Two is, uh, man, it was something on TV and I'm hot. I just freaking forgot it when you asked that's me. That's how you know you old. Yeah, facts. I'll think of it while you're saying yours. Um, I'm going to music and it's funny. We talked about um, people aging gracefully, man, and, and just listening to age appropriate rap. If you need, I know we have a lot of listeners that actually listen for their kids to keep up with what's going on with what they checking out. I got something for the parents, man. Check out Joel Ortiz's new album, Autograph, Age Appropriate. Uh, <laughs> he's saying real shit on there that's going to resonate with you if you watch like myself, but still fly and cool and shit like also myself. So Niggas check out Joel Ortiz's autograph. Niggas tried to laugh me out the room. Two albums, well, last album Joel L.T. dropped and I told him it was bang. You did say that. I told Joe LT's be rapping his ass off. His album made my top 10 list that year. Yeah, you did. So, that. See, that was, that's what that's what blew it, though. When you went too far. <laughs> you went too far when you did that. But this is a good album, though. It's got some good joints on here for real. I, I, I definitely gonna check that out. I fuck with Joel. Uh, my other one was uh, Narcos Mexico. I finished that this weekend, man. People think that the Narcos series has fell off. Hey, man, it, it, it got a strong case for six seasons of straight through. I don't Damn. think it's a bad episode because you got the regular Narcos where they was talking about Colombia and you got the Narcos Mexico where talking about Mexico and they put it all together. Hey, I, and you have to be into that too. There's a lot of ad-libbed and reading shit, but it-, it Oh, subtitle into, shit. Yeah, excuse me, a lot of subtitles, but if you're into like how that whole drug trade started from Mexico to Colombia and got to the US, 
that shit was fire. Like the ending was great. Uh, the the how it stuck to reality. I looked up some of the people and looked at a documentary after well, that shit was fire. A lot of information in there. Narcos Mexico, new season just dropped. I finished the last episode uh, this weekend. That's how you know something good when you you, you go into that deep dive. You start looking at Wikipedia up. and wondering where this motherfucker had and like yep. what happened to him then. Like that shit was like I, I was all that shit was good, man. Yeah, man. Guys, let us know what y'all are thankful for. We're thankful for y'all tapping into the podcast. That's number one. Leaving comments, likes, retweets. We appreciate all of that good shit, man. And do us a favor, youtube.com slash on deck TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for your folks one time. Uh, anything else before we get out of here? No, man. Same as you. Appreciate you guys tapping in, man. Um, let us know who you guys would invite to Thanksgiving dinner all week, man. Leave the comments. Let us know. That's the episode for next week. Who's coming to Thanksgiving dinner hip hop style. We do it every year. We love to know what you guys think so we can read a couple of them on the show. Uh, but again, thank you guys. It's the On Deck TV podcast. Many more. All of them.